Hello everyone and welcome to Devlog 5. I think today we're going to start off with a little bit of my new movement gym that I've been making between devlogs. This is just to test all the different traversal things out that we've built in the last four devlogs. So if you want to go check those out in some more details, you'll see how I built a lot of this functionality, like the, the, the jump pads here, the auto jumping system like this. We've got climbing, we've got block pushing, there's a ton of things. But as you can see, this is all working together. We can come in here, we can push this block until all the way over here, and then we can climb up, climb up this. It's all working really nicely, really smoothly. Super happy with this. Like I said, check out the other devlogs and you can see jump and hang on to here. And I can move that further away as well. I don't know, like all the way over here. We should have enough velocity to grab that later on. And we can make this jump. We can hang on further down like this and climb our way up. And it works really nicely. But yeah, there we go very happy with this but I think it's time we move on to the actual main part of the devlog now so we're just starting on our implementation of combat here I'm gonna work on the lock-on targeting system first so while that's going on in the background I want to talk about a couple of things that are changing with the devlogs from this point forward and some of the things that you've asked and I've seen questions about since I've started releasing devlogs now so the first one, let's talk about the devlogs themselves and what's going to change with them. They're going to be a little bit shorter. This episode may still be quite long because it's combat, but just because I feel like all the other episodes have been so long, like 30 minutes, I'm going to start cutting down the amount I show you guys me working on the blueprints and me tinkering with the blueprints and stuff like that. I'll just show some of that work and then I'll cut to kind of a showcase where I'm up to a little bit more and kind of move on and on and on rather than really long sections of me talking over blueprints like right now but we'll do it kind of a little bit more focused on those showcases of how the implementation's working hello past matt here it's been a while since i've recorded one of these but let me give you a really quick overview of how this is all looking now i've got the target system built i can hold down the left trigger and we will target a enemy and then if i press left or right on the right analog stick we swap Right now it's swapping back, but that's just an easy hold switch on my on my thing, but you can see it here kind of working. There we go. I'm just gonna add this to the end of that section. I've now made it so that you have to hold it very briefly, but you now can't quickly swipe the left analog stick to swap between like I'm, do I'm trying to do it right now. Not working unless I have enough of a hold and then you nicely smoothly go through them. There's one over here. And if I want to switch, I can switch over to this one and this one. And you may notice as well that when I'm now targeting, we now go into a four axis movement. I can only move left and right. This is around the, ro the center rotation of the enemy I'm targeting and forward and backwards. I can't do them at the same time, so I can't move diagonally. As much as I try, I can't. So it's basically a grid-based system based around the target, which I really like. It, it gives more precise actions. And also, I've now got rid of the right trigger resetting the camera you would have seen me using it a lot in previous devlogs now the left trigger does that as well and it also if you're holding onto it it locks you in like this as you can see so if you're running around you do this it locks you in to this although i think right now i'm targeted on the enemy so if i come over here and i try doing that it locks you into this four degrees and we'll be able to do hot side hops and back flips and a bunch of different things and in this mode you can climb still, it's something I'm going to fix, because it is super glitchy, as you can see, look. And there's also some weird things where, like, it, it still kind of works, and it kind of doesn't at the same time. But I think if you're holding this down, I don't think, because yeah, you can do, you can literally just do this. So I think I'm going to make it so that if you're holding down the trigger, you can't climb and you can't push blocks or anything. I might have already done the can't push blocks thing, actually. So if I'm in this mode, and I try to hold, yeah, I can't move a block, but if I let go of the trigger, we then start pushing the block. And that's another new addition, when you start pushing the block, the camera moves behind you now. It was something I noticed on another playthrough of Ocarina of Time, and I quite liked that. The other thing is I've made it now so that all of the other stuff works pretty smoothly. Great. Works really nicely. And if I switch over to keyboard, I can press tab, and again, Q and E to switch but they don't activate until you've released the button so you don't actually swap targets until after but there we go it's working i like that you can just be walking around and if you want to face an enemy you can just quickly tap 
tab or left trigger as well. It feels pretty good. Yeah, I like that a lot. It's good. And as I was saying before, Pastor Matt took over to talk about targeting system, and now we're going to work on some more of the combat and implementing it. I wanted to also talk about some of the questions I've had. One, one main question, which is, why don't I just strip out the lighting and remove the shadows to make it look more like a N64 or PS1 era game? And that's not really my goal. I've talked about it a little bit in some of the devlogs, where my actual visual target for the game is to adhere to the triangle counts, the texture limitations and the resolutions, all of that aesthetic from the N64 and PS1 era, but then to meld it with some more modern game techniques and game engine features, such as shadows and lighting and particles and stuff like that, and find this really nice middle ground. And that is going to be really where the game's going to end up visually. That's why I wanted to create that prototype level, the, the one with all the, the rain and the coral and everything. It's a visual target, right? It's still really low poly and it still looks like a game from that era, but I'm not slapping a ton of filters and stuff on the screen. It's just I'm limiting you to a max resolution and it kind of pixelates things a little bit with my post processing, but I'm still keeping things like the, the visual elements of the shadows and stuff like that on screen. Anyway, this is combat focused. We're already like four minutes in and really we've only talked about combat once. So let me pass over again to past Matt. We're going to talk about a little bit more about combat and then when we come back to me, future Matt, I'll also talk more about combat. But please leave your comments and your feedback below. I would love to hear what you think. Past Matt here. I'm a little sick today, but I still wanted to record a little bit of the devlog to show you where we're at. We can now draw our sword, which extends. The blade itself extends when you pull it out and it collapses when you sheath it away. And you can just make it out on the character's hip right there. You can see there is the sword hilt on our hip and the blade itself is collapsed in here. So if I go back in game and I draw that out, you see that sword extends. Just be really cool once the sound and stuff on there. There is a problem with running around. You can see the sword hits the player's head. So maybe I'll create a new blend space for combat or when you have a weapon drawn, you'll use a different set of movement look and motion animations. There is something else I want to point out in dev camera, which you may have noticed which is that we now have got these little diamond shape things on both of the left arms here. And what they do is they project our shields. So if you sheath your sword, you'll also put away the shields. But they were always there, they're always present on the character. You could spam it if you really wanted to, but they're always there, always present. And they look pretty cool. So now that we have all of that implemented and we lock onto a character, we could block we could attack, we could run away and sheath our weapons and get out of here. But that's the progress so far. I'm not going to make this section too long because like I said, I'm sick and I probably don't sound quite as usual as I normally would. But I will include a couple of clips of me running around the main level, as you can see here. Just testing out the drawing of the sword and the shield and running around some places. I put these on my Twitter as well. But um yeah hopefully you like hopefully you like this and you like how it's looking uh we're gonna start implementing health and actually doing damage and being able to attack next so that'll be fun obviously the combat system is super early days and it's one of these things that i'm just figuring out and learning and this is a really huge moment because i want to meld a lot of the ideas and concepts from games like ocarina of time dinosaur planet and other games from that era with the lock-on system, with Z-targeting as it was called, and strafing and dodging and being able to attack and all of that. I want to implement all of that, but then also take some learnings from more modern games like Dark Souls and how you kind of approach that combat. I'm not saying this game is going to be a Souls like it's not. It's going to be much closer to those classic games, but I think it's really useful to look at how you approach combat in those games versus how you'll approach combat in my game and what we can learn and what we can take from some of that and meld together. I think you should still be able to swing the sword around when you're not targeting someone, especially if we want to cut down bushes or if we want to, you know, hack through a wall or a hedge or something like that. But then when we're locked onto an enemy, that's when we're, you know, doing the main thing with the hitboxes and stuff like that. But you should probably also be able to hit an enemy and do damage if you're not locked on. So there's a lot of stuff to think about there. And what's going on in the background now is me showing a lot of that. But we'll go to past Matt again 
and talk a little bit more about the combat system and see what we're up to. Hello, Pass Matt here. I haven't recorded in a little while because I've been sick and I'm still a little bit sick, but I'm on the other side of it now, so... Yeah, feeling a little bit better. Let me show you where I'm up to so we can now draw the sword and attack with it like this and we can sheath that away. We can still roll, slash the sword. And what I like is that you can run and slash the sword as well. That's what these animations are probably going to be used for. I would say ignore the the animations when we're still. Let me just turn off all those trace component uh, things from the sphere trace for now, just so it's not spamming the screen and you can get a better idea of how this looks. So we draw our sword, we can attack. As you can see, when we're stood still, it doesn't look great, but when we're running, it's okay. Those are pretty passable for when we're running. So what I'll probably do is have these set for now for when we're running around. So these are our movement arm swing animations. But when we're stood still, we can probably have a bit more of a bespoke, powerful, strong animation to show the, the sword being swung. So we'll implement those at a later date. But we can now lock onto our targets. We can swing our sword and we kill them. And again, see, because one of my other hits hit that one. So see usually you need to hit these things twice to kill them uh there is a little bit of a hitch you might have seen uh there's still some stuff happening here as you can see the errors i'm still figuring out but most of this will probably go once i have an actual enemy in because i'm using let me show you i'm using the destroy actor and then collect garbage system which this is a terrible node by the way it just creates such a bad hitch but if i remove it and then I go in here, and I just attack an enemy a couple of times. We kill two of them there. Do it without locking on. And then I come out of here. Oh, it isn't doing it now. Oh, that's a good thing. Okay. Before, it was throwing up a ton of uh, errors. Which may be me trying to lock on to something that isn't there. I'm not sure. But they seem to have fixed it, actually. There we go. Kill our enemies. And there we go. Yeah, so it is still throwing these up. These are the errors I'm getting. So my dummy enemy blueprint is just causing a ton of errors uh, to do with the lock-on system. It's not end of the world stuff, but basically when I kill them like this, I just want them to just disappear from the world and not be referenceable anymore. But pretty good progress. I don't know how much else I'm going to do in Devlog 5, because this has been, in terms of the start of this episode to now, has been the longest span of any devlog just because I've been sick. So I want to, you know, put a bow on this and call this a done devlog pretty soon. But there's a few other things I want to finish implementing before I, I call it here. I'm back from being sick and it's time for some more work on the combat system. This is the last section of the devlog. But what we're going to do is going to add an, a lock on symbol, like a, a thing that spins around a little bit like Ocarina of Time, that when you're locked onto the enemy, you know that's the enemy you're locked onto. Fun little process. And I actually just made the icon itself spin within the material rather than adding like a flip book or something like that. I just added a 2D sprite that spins around the center of the texture, around the texture, the, the center of the material uh, in Unreal, which was a pretty easy thing to get working. That was good. And then I decided, okay, let's start tackling behavior trees. Behavior trees is something I'm going to look at way more in the future. We're going to have enemies with patrol zones. We're going to have certain wildlife that will fly or have its own little like migration routes and little like patrol areas as well. Some of those will be docile creatures that will just kind of not do anything when they see the enemy or see the player I mean. But if you then attack them they may then become hostile, they may run away, but then there will be other enemies that will hunt you down and start attacking you as soon as they see you as well. So I wanted to just start implementing some of those basic systems. So the main things I wanted to get involved in and get working were a patrol system so I can place target points within the world and those target points can be assigned to different AI to do different things and then I also wanted to have a combat system in place where specifically if with a pawn sensor the enemy will be like okay I'm sensing the player character's pawn noise over there that we're going to go attack them and go go towards them as the main target and they'll hunt you down but then if you go out of range of them or they can't see you anymore they'll go back and start patrolling again or something like that. I think I'll probably want most of my 
mobile creatures to always be moving in some way. They might reach certain points within patrols and wait there for a while, but it's very unlikely that an enemy will stand still. Some of the creatures may graze or, you know, eat places or drink and things like that in certain areas, and we can have that sort of interaction with the world happening. But for now, just getting these systems in place was really great. And I know right now our enemy is still a red cylinder that chases us around. But I think that's quite fun. I quite like that. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with getting this far, considering I've been sick for pretty much a week. I, I lost about a week's worth of focus sprint time on the game. So I'm a little bit behind, but hopefully this has still been enjoyable for you all. But let me pass back to pass map and we'll show this all in actual working progress in the game. Hello everyone, pass Matt here. And we now have our enemy AI all working, as you can see. Oh wow, the uh, the trigger for this is coming coming up when I'm over here. Uh, yeah, so the AI is currently it saw me, it came towards me. Now it's going back to patrol, but it's going to see me again. It's going to start chasing me, as you can see. If I hold X to move block, I need to reduce the radius of that. But now I can attack it, and there we go. We have killed our first enemy. That was chasing us. So why is this? Where was that? I swear it was while I was locked on. This hold X to move block thing was coming up on the screen. Weird. It didn't doesn't seem to be doing it now, does it? That's so strange. It's like because I'm close to this enemy that's trying to attack us. It's doing that. Because I can definitely do that. That's strange, isn't it? There must be something causing that UI to come up on the screen, and I'm not sure what it is. But anyway, uh, yeah, this is this seems to be working fine. I'll fix that little bug with the the AI and kill this guy. And we see our enemy right here. We can actually tell it what its default behavior is, and if we want, we could have this patrolling to begin with. And you'll see it'll start moving around, doing its own thing. I'll come up here and watch it. Actually, there it goes. It's gonna go over there. We can watch it. I think it might have seen us, actually. It did. It saw us up here, and it's coming for us. Die! <laughs> there we go. So that's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed adding this stuff uh, in this week's devlog, actually. That was a very fun devlog. I know the combat's not quite there, but I've been sick. I've, I'm just over being sick, actually. It's It, it knocked me out for a little, little while, but... I'm pretty happy with that as a, you know, a progress of getting a combat system in place. I know right now the animations aren't perfect and stuff, but we'll talk more about that next devlog. But I think there's one little thing I want to cover, and that's some things I plan for the future. So I guess this is out for past Matt and back to future Matt for wrapping up the episode. So there's just a couple of things I want to end the episode on, which I think it's worth you all knowing and seeing a little bit. This is the arm cannon, as I'm currently calling it. You'll get this as a reward or a treasure within the first dungeon on the first planet. And its main function, it's this super heavy, really powerful ranged weapon, but it can also be used to shoot distant things for puzzles to drop down or to trigger targets on the wall that will then open a door and things like that. It is very heavy for the player character and they need to use all four arms to balance it so they can't move when they use it they'll stand still and kind of look around and you'll aim and and a similar aiming system to say dinosaur planet or something like that you'll have to little reticle on the screen you'll be able to angle yourself and move around but and you know target where you want to go but you won't be able to move the character until you put that arm blaster away and the arm blaster as well will have a second function that will unlock in the second planet which will be a laser zip system, as I'm calling it, where you'll be able to zip to different points, a little bit like a hookshot, very much like a hookshot, and you'll be able to hook yourself onto these targets, zip over to them, and reach areas you couldn't before. This is something, these are the two main functions of this weapon, and you unlock one and then the other, and then there'll be other features and weapons and gadgets that you'll unlock as well. An exciting idea to showcase to you all, uh, yeah, that's about it for this episode. Again, sorry I was sick and I lost so much progress in terms of time. I wanted to really get us a bit further with the combat. I wanted to implement the stationary versus moving animations, which again we'll talk about in the next devlog. But 
I'm feeling also a little bit burnt out on blueprints, and I've talked about this before, when I start feeling a little bit like, oh my god, all I've been doing is blueprint, 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 and planning on all of that for so long, I feel like I need to go back and do something more creative. So in the next few devlogs, maybe we'll start blocking out the full first planet. Maybe we'll build an, our first, maybe, creature, piece of wildlife. Maybe we'll build some, you know, pieces of wildlife that are non-interactable. So maybe they're like birds that are flying through the sky, jellyfish or fish in the sea and, and stuff like that. They just kind of do their own thing. They don't pay attention to the player character. But then maybe we'll also build our first actual creature and do something pretty cool with that and actually start making it hop around and doing things and maybe this can be one of the docile ones that just kind of go around and do their own thing. I think that'll be really fun because now we've got these AI systems in place we can start building different creatures and different you know AI routines for these creatures pretty easily now that the blueprints are all in place it should be fairly easy to do that. Anyway thank you all so much for watching uh, please do like and subscribe if you're interested in these devlogs and comment below and thank you all so much who already have commented and been following along this series the reception has been amazing thank you all so much but yeah thank you and i'll see you all next time goodbye